at the conclusion of Parshat Tzav, Aaron and his brethren, the Kohanim, are fully prepared to begin their service in the Mishkan, in the tabernacle, in the desert, to all of the people, to be the, the priests, the servants, as it were, facilitating the divine service of the Israelites. But before they can begin, they are told to wait for seven days by God. This is the very conclusion of Parshat Tzav, chapter 8, verse 35 of Leviticus. Ufetach oel moed teshvu yomam v'layla shivat yamim. At the entrance of the tent of meeting, which is in the tabernacle, you will dwell, you will wait, you will sit for seven days, day and night. Ushmartem at mishmerat Hashem v'lo tamutu. You should, you have to guard this service of God, lest you die. Ki kein suveti. For thus I have commanded says God, and indeed, that's what Aaron and his children do. V'yas Aaron uvanav et kol advarim asher tziva Hashem biad Moshe. And indeed, Aaron and his kids do everything, all these things that God commanded them by way of Moses. The Torah Tamima cites a fascinating Midrash, which we're going to discuss, from the Yerushalmi of Masechet Moed Katan, the Tal Jerusalem Talmud of Tractate Moed Katan, chapter 3, Halacha 4. And here's the Midrash. Minayin la'avelut shivat yamim in Torah. From where do we know that there is a seven-day mourning period, which we know as Shiva? Where is the Torah source for that seven-day period of Shiva? Pe folks who... Uh, uh, our tr traditionally minded Jews or observant Jews today know that following a person's death, their immediate relatives sit in their homes for seven days. This is called the Shiva period, the intensive mourning period. So the question of the Midrash is, is there a Torah source for, for this idea? Where does the Torah talk about this? And this Midrash is going to argue that the source is the verse that we just read. Amar Rabbi Yaakov, B'Shem Rabbi Zeera, Rabbi Yaakov said in the name of Rabbi Zeera, Dechtiv, as it is stated in our verse, Ufetach Olam Oed, Teshvu Yomam Valayla Shivat Yamim, Ushmartemet Mishmeret Hashem. It really quotes the verse almost in, in its entirety. You will dwell, you, Aaron, and your children will dwell, will wait in front of the entrance to the tent of meeting for seven days, day and night, and you will keep or guard the service of God. Now here is, that doesn't, as so up until now in the Midrash, we should have a question because the framing here was, what is the Torah source for a period of mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G? And nothing here has been a reference to that yet. So what's the Midrash claiming? Here we go. Kishem Shashimera Kadosh Baruch Hu Al Olamo Shivat Yamim, just like God waited or guarded, waited for or anticipated seven days on God's world, Kach Atem Shamru Al Achichem Shivat Yamim. So too should you wait seven days for your brothers or your brethren. That's the conclusion of the Midrash that the Torah Tamima cites. So what is going on here? Says the Torah Tamima. First, he's going to explain the first part of the analogy where it said that just like God waited or guarded or anticipated on God's world for seven days, says the Torah Tamima, the fact that it says that God guarded or waited for God's world for seven days, this is a reference to the seven days that God anticipated or waited or gave notice before destroying the world in the flood, in Noah's flood, back in the beginning of Genesis. And what? how do we know there were seven days? Kedichtiv, the verse there in Genesis says, And it was after seven days that God brought the waters of the flood. Indeed, if you go back and look at Genesis, you'll see that God says, and it's referenced in two different verses, God says it will be in seven days, or it was after seven days, that the flood began. So the Midrash is connecting that seven days that God waited or anticipated bringing the flood, which destroyed the world, to the seven days that the Kohanim are supposed to wait outside the tent of meeting for seven days. But wait, 
Again, still, what's the connection to mourning? The Torah Tamima does not say it explicitly, but what is the very next thing that is going to happen? This is the conclusion of Parsha Tzav, the very next week's Parsha, the next lines in the Torah is the beginning of Parsha Shmini, which we're going to do in a couple of weeks because of Pesach. And what happens in Parshat Shmini? Well, you, we learn about uh, the children of Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, who bring a, a foreign fire, a foreign service. This is Vikhu Vene Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, Ishmachtato, that the children of Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, each brought their shovel full of incense improperly. And a fire came out from God and consumed them. And they die in front of God. The Midrash seemingly is anticipating the deaths that will befall Nadav and Avihu and equating and then therefore saying that what is the reason for the seven day waiting period? before the Kohanim can start their service in the temple, it's an antis- it's anticipating death and destruction and is a sense of mourning, just like God anticipated the sense of death and destruction and mourning vis-a-vis the flood. This is very, it's a fascinating idea. It's very, I find it to be very potent and poignant. Uh, it's not so simple or obvious. Normally, we know of mourning that takes place after a death. These are two examples, the flood, and if you accept this Midrash, then this seven-day anticipatory period before service in the Mishkan will begin. These, these both happen before the death happens. And yet, uh, according to this Midrash, we're supposed to learn out the seven-day period of Shiva, which we do after a death. This is from the from periods that from two examples in the Torah where the period of mourning was prior. So is this really the source for Shiva as we know it? It would be a, seems like a bit of a stretch. And indeed, the Torah Tamima says no. Vihine kol drashazu hi asmachta. This whole drasha, this whole midrash, this comparison is really just sort of an illusion. Because really Shiva is just a rabbinic construct. It's a it's a rabbinic a takana. Uh, they appointed it. They made it so, as is described elsewhere. But uh, he the Torah Tamima claims he's not the only one to claim this that the sages for the things that they uh, were metakein, that they set up, they nevertheless want to find Torah allusions or Torah references to them to draw authority to what they set up. And this is one such source. And uh, so, and indeed, most medieval commentators, most Rishonim do believe that uh, Shiva, as we know it today, is rabbinic. There's an argument whether the first day itself might be biblical, uh, but it, that itself is an argument. Also, some, I th- believe the Rift believes that all seven days are biblical, but generally we say that they're all of rabbinic origin. But nevertheless, there is an allusion in our verse here at the end of Parshat Sav, which is anticipating the upcoming death of Nadav and Avihu in this strange um, and kind of unsettling way. Therefore, having a seven-day mourning period, which takes place beforehand, just like God had this seven-day mourning and anticipatory period seven days prior for the seven days before bringing the flood. So a very powerful, poignant idea here. We're learning a little bit about mourning and connecting it to the narrative of our Parsha and the Parsha, which will come next week. Always a pleasure learning with you. More next week.